Good morning, almost afternoon. It's a, another gorgeous, gorgeous day here at Penrose Point State Park at about 11.53. That's really not an about, <laughs> but the tide is predicted to be negative 4.02. A negative four foot tide is an incredible low tide. Um, you can see the point here out at Penrose Point State Park is well exposed. All that green seaweed lets us know the mid inner tidal zone is ripe for exploration. As you get closer to the water, we might even see some of that brown kelp today. So hi there, everybody. It's Tina Troyer here. Um, we have the rest of the Harbor Wild Watch crew out at Salt Creek this weekend to enjoy these amazing low tides. And so uh, we're doing one more day of beach monitoring before uh, we go join them. Uh, and we'll have some fun educational content coming coming to you from there. The service isn't great, so no lives, but uh, some fun, cool stuff. So today we're doing our third round of beach monitoring out at Penrose. You can see our rad team of community science scientists up here. Uh, we have a mix of UWT and PLU students, um, as well as Harbor Wild Watch, and of course the ever so epic Mike Barron's uh, collaborating with us. So if you want to let us know where you're watching from, uh, we're going to do a little beach walk while uh, my team gears up for some beach seining. Um, that's where we drag a net through the water and catch some fish. But we just wrapped up kind of the some of the basic surveys that we do during these events a presence absence survey, and then counting things at the tidal height. And we came across some cool stuff, so I'm gonna see if I can find it again. Uh, one of those things is this log here. And you can see that it has all these holes. And this is kind of a neat, neat thing to observe because these are where the ship worms, which aren't a worm at all, it's actually a species of clam, but they burrow through the wood and really make this cool, cool looking pattern. So those are the little wormholes through the wood. You can imagine if you were a dock somewhere that this would be really problematic. That's part of the reason why those pilings are treated with creosote, which then of course has its own environmental implications. Um, the yeah, balance of public safety and environmentalism. What a, what a twist there. Uh, but also for ships, this can cause problems because then you have holes in your boat, which isn't good. So, uh, treating that wood is important for us, but not great for the environment. So, uh, there's some cool, cool ways to, uh, make those changes. So a lot of new docks are being made with stainless steel pilings, um, to kind of get away from that. So, oh, it's so exciting. We have a third grade class watching from Canada. Wow. Welcome to Washington, friends. We hope to come visit you soon. Uh, here's another just look out at the beach. It is beautiful. Hopefully y'all have plans for staying cool. You know, here in Washington, we're, we're supposed to get into the 100 degrees, which is kind of unheard of. Um, another cool thing we noticed on this log is this mysterious pink goo, which we're predicting is the poop of the shipworms. Uh, don't get to see that every day, folks. So we we're pretty, pretty stoked about that. <laughs> You'll also notice we can see that it is getting to be summer here. All this green seaweed is thriving. Um, if I look up to the top of the beach where the tide reaches and covers this whole area with water, you can see that green seaweed isn't as prevalent um, in the higher inner tidal zone. When we move our way down the beach, we notice it gets more green, and that's our clue that we're in the mid inner tidal zone, which is where we find all sorts of cool, slippy, slimy critters that have amazing adaptations for surviving uh, this low tide. Granted, it is a hot, it's a scorcher today, so we'll see. Uh, we might see some thermally stressed critters. I'm kind of peeking out here, noticing the birds are probably getting their their little lunch. So when the tide is low, the table is set. And sometimes we might, we might see what those birds are looking at and go investigate closer. So let's make our way further down the beach. Although, okay, one more thing. 
that pink poop isn't just on the log, it's also <laughs> collected at the bottom here. That is amazing. Amazing. Okay, so uh, an interesting thing about where we're at on this beach, there's this kind of clay substrate. So all the ground here is rock hard. Um, there is a clam species that can bury in hard clay like this called a pitic clam. Um, and I know we saw some siphons sticking out, so I'll keep an eye out to see if we find any more of those. Um, let's see. Okay, I put a shell on this rock because we found something cool. So help me remember. All right, so we had a mystery this morning. We came across, whoop, focus, <laughs> this strange thing, which is hard on the tip and then squishy. Part of us, we were thinking, I guess you could put your predictions in the comments um, of what you wonder that might be. I was thinking, since it's squishy, that maybe it's a species of sponge, but this hard part was the puzzling bit because sponges, while they can be like firm, they're not that calcareous like shell-like material. And so looking around on the beach, we realized we found the shell of a rock jingle here. This is an animal that has a muscle that sticks to the rock and then it can open and close. This one, of course, is no longer living. <laughs> Looks like it even has a little crab molt in there. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on here. But we realized that, look how perfectly that puzzles together. So our best guess is that this strange thing on the rock is that muscle that this little jingle and notice oh my gosh it really fits perfectly <laughs> into that space you can see where the barnacles are growing around the shell um, and so for whatever reason this rock jingle has become part of the food web fallen off the rock leaving behind that muscle that sticks to the rock so this is something I've never seen before um, and it's just fun so even though I spend spent a lot of years out on the beach exploring the low tide you never know. You always can find something new. Um, and so I love moments like this. So we think we solved the mystery. If you have a better guess, feel free to let us know. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just peek at our team. They're gearing up, getting ready to drag that net. Hi team. <laughs> what, a, what troopers. Uh, and yeah, let's see what else we can find in this low, low zone. We earlier, when the tide was up here, uh, this was all in water, and there was a huge midshipman fish, which we can actually, whoops, still see. I think that's the fish tail. So, it's got a lot of low tide to hang out here for, so we'll let that be. Um, there, maybe we'll catch some in our net that we'll get to talk about. I know we saw a couple in yesterday's live, which ended unexpectedly because sometimes the service is a little spotty here. So hopefully uh, <laughs> we don't lose service. Oh, glad to hear that y'all are celebrating a virtual beach day. Uh, if your kiddos have any questions, I'm happy to try and answer those if you wanna type those in the comments. Really, if anybody has any questions happy to see what we know. Okay, now here's something that is unfortunate to see. Sometimes when you come out to the beach and explore, it's exciting to roll rocks because you can find things like that midshipman fish. But a rock, or a boulder really, in this case, uh, is often hard to flip back. And sometimes people don't put their rocks back, um, which is a bummer because I am looking here and noticing these funny little rings. All of these are the casings from midshipman eggs. Normally we'd see these bright yellow balls under rocks like this, and those are the fertilized eggs of the plain fin midshipman. But when a rock is left and those eggs are exposed, um, those birds will definitely, you know, have a little midshipman omelet. And so, Maybe we'll go see if that's what that seagull is eating and we can flip that rock back in place to give those fish a better chance. Um, 
So what I'm gonna do is roll this rock back before I leave because I also noticed that these jingles here, um, remember the ones that we just saw with that cool shell that attaches, that has a hole in the shell so the mussel can attach to the rock. Um, these ones don't like to be as high and dry as they currently are. Um, these are just this kind of spongy, oh, maybe that's not a sponge. Okay, it's good to touch things because that's just a cool feature of this rock. Okay, so let's see if we can, uh, well, before I do that, the other problem with this is this is a really heavy rock, so I can't physically lift it and set it back. I'm gonna have to roll it, and that can be dangerous to you or the animals below. Uh, and now there's these guys who are exposed, so maybe we'll put that back. <laughs> Tricky little conundrum here, but uh, this is a, looks like a slender coxcomb. This is a species of fish that has a cool adaptation for surviving the intertidal zone. As long as it's wet, it can breathe through its skin. So I'm not worried about putting this fish back. Um, oh, yeah. Pencil. Uh, I also noticed that there's a red rock crab here and a black clawed mud crab. And then <laughs> just all sorts of life. The snails, these are little dove snails, which I think are pretty cute, because if you hold them, maybe we'll wave to the students over in, in Canada. Of course, now it's camera shy. Okay, there it goes, good. Wave to all our friends, little snail. You can see its little slimy foot sticking out into the world. This one's not as uh, active as some I've seen. Maybe we just have to be patient. There it goes. See that little wiggle? <laughs> we'll set it down for a second and try another one. Ooh, glad to have some people tuning in. Got Jay and Michael. Awesome. All right, so. Let's go look at that other rock. I'm actually gonna set y'all down for just a second. Woohoo, look at the beach. Need two hands for this. Oh no, don't fall. Tricky. Okay, so you can see our team over here, rocking and rolling, getting the sane set up. So we'll let them do that for a little bit and then come see what they find. Ooh, Steph's got something cool. Steph, come over here with me and we'll look at that. <laughs> we got we to gotta investigate what this seagull is seeing first. Because I think they're eating midshipman eggs and that makes me sad. <laughs> All right. Ooh, is the fish under the rock sensitive to light? That's a great question. Uh, I'm sure they notice it. Ooh, just as expected. Sorry, sidetracked. That seagull indeed was having a midshipman snack little midshipman omelet which is great for that seagull not great for these eggs so personal service announcement what's a PSA <laughs> PSA for today if you're gonna roll a huge rock please 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 always put that rock back because these poor eggs are now left to be eaten or dried out um or just generally sad so we're gonna put that back but first let's look at some more eggs these look like trash, but are actually uh, the eggs of a moon snail. And so what they'll do is they'll mix their mucus and sand and kind of extrude this from, they'll like bury in the sand and they'll extrude this, leaving it up on top of the beach to go in and out with the tide. And so a big moon snail collar like this, uh, maybe a little bigger, would have half a million baby moon snails, which is amazing. Very cool, you can see this one. We actually can estimate the size of the snail that laid this, so a bigger moon snail and a smaller moon snail. Good find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely not trash, so leave those on the beach. Do you wanna roll that? Yeah, Steph, are you feeling strong? <laughs> Save some midshipmen today. Actually, before you roll it, let's just do one kind of gentle, careful look, because we don't want to um, smash the fish that might be under here guarding the eggs. 
so just kind of, I'm using this shell gently because one thing I know about midshipmen is they have these little barbs on their side of their head and they hurt. Uh, they have a, a, a not feel good this venom. Hold on, what's the difference between venom and poison? Venom, if it sticks you, ouch. Poison, if you eat it, ouch. So venomous spines that you do not want to get poked with. Um, I generally recommend that kids, or really anyone, don't handle fish because you never know. Um, and a lot of times that slimy coat uh, gets disrupted if we touch them, especially if we touch them with dry hands. So if you are gonna handle fish, wet hands for sure, being careful. Um, I was telling some kiddos not to touch a midshipman once. And then of course they kept touching it. And then one of them got, one of them got poked. And uh, he said that was the most painful thing that they'd ever experienced their poor young life so it's barnacles be eating. nice to fish yeah it's a cool look okay now that we're looking at it of course it's gonna stay closed there's a couple right there of course there is um this is one more kind of interesting thing so rock dingles rock dingles this one is a little different you can see that peak in the shell letting us know that it's a slipper snail which is kind of cool um, okay, so we're gonna put this rock back. Thanks, Steph, for saving the day. I can kind of look out and see that there's other rocks that have been flipped and not returned. Uh, spots where there's not all that green algae growing on them. Um, so when we do our sea star survey a little bit later today, we'll go ahead and put those rocks back how we found them. Um, so yeah, the little eggs that the seagull was eating are laid by a fish called the plain fin midshipmen uh, and they're a cool fish that hopefully we might even see in our net here today uh, but they're also sometimes called the honking fish because uh, to attract mates they'll kind of make a barking honking sound um, and then they'll you know get together and then lay some eggs under a rock usually a nice big rock because they want those eggs to stay nice and cool and moist during the low tide and then um, a neat thing about them is they have photophores on their belly uh, which kind of gives them their name the plain fin midshipman because it looks like the buttons of a suit so we'll see if we find any of those uh, this net just got drug through this nearshore habitat and so we get to see what fish are living right out here which is pretty cool um, as far as the moon snails go, they are a predator of clams. So they'll dig through the sand, find a clam. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any shells on the beach that have the mark of the moon snail. I haven't seen any yet, but um, <laughs> cool to see that. But yeah, they'll, they'll eat clams. Uh, and then yeah, all this green, I have to commend both Mike and Kinsey for their incredible strength because hauling a net that's full of green algae and some of that brown algae there <laughs> is a lot of work so really impressed with y'all for hanging out mike do you want to show us that cool crab before you go this is a helmet crab one that we find in the lower intertidal zone so not surprised that we were able to drag it up with our net they're kind of fuzzy very cool. Nice find. And yeah, and so what our community scientists are doing is they're digging through the seaweed right now, making sure that all the fish we caught get into that bucket so that we can identify them and count them. And it looks like Tova got a really slippery one. Uh, Mike's shaking the net a little bit because then those fish will start squirreling around so we can find them pretty cool stuff so let's go <laughs> the adventures of fish identification all right did we get any midshipmen's we've got a lot of midshipmen questions i don't see any all right Ooh, 
Okay, well, here's one fish with an algae hairdo. Take that out. Try and catch it again. Oops. Okay. I can't film and um, <laughs> do this at the same time. Uh, good. Fine, Kenzie. All right. So, we're going to go through. Mike, do you mind talking about these fish as we go? <laughs> Excellent. So we release the fish as we count them, and we'll see what we see. We've got a shiner perch, staghorn sculpin, saddleback gunnel, tide pool sculpin, and probably fluffy sculpin. We're going to start with surf perch, a shiner surf perch with three yellow bars on them. Cute. Um, this looks like a pregnant female. You can see her belly's bulging and she's going to give birth to live fish about that big. Wow. Plink. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I swear we had more than one of those. But... Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Oh. Got a crab wrangler. <laughs> A nice big red rock crab. Very crabby crab. <laughs> Get you in the water. Revive. We got a staghorn sculpin. The big spines coming off the side. Black spot on the dorsal fin. If I can hold that up at all. Oh, yeah. Notice Mike has nice wet hands when handling these fish. That is a good, a good call. I think on these, I'm just gonna have you hashtag them, yeah. like, or just this tag them. So fluffy sculpin. So oh, I think notice, it's a fluffy. Yeah, notice how this fish is as green as the seaweed on the ground. A really short nose. <laughs> Excellent. I think that's going to be a... Oh. It has the saddle. Yeah, that's... I think it's going to be a tide pool sculpin with the saddle. We have some kiddos uh, from Ontario tuning in and nice. they're loving the fish. Glad to hear it. If you could let us know how many students you have tuning in, that would be helpful for our grant numbers. <laughs> Woohoo! We'll just type that in the comments. That'd be great. What are you? It's like a sculpt. There's a lot of sculpin species in the Puget Sound, and they are pretty tricky to tell apart sometimes. Um, we just write down, this is going to be Sculpin on ID, but then write down um, that there are rough, rough scales above the lateral line and saddle patches. And those saddle patches are kind of those lighter stripes on the back of this fish. Woo! <laughs> A very slippery fish. Another fluffy. Fluffy. And then we have the team over here, Steph, recording the data diligently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So many. We'll do these. Oh, oh, yeah. A fluffy. And a female pipefish. Cool. So, relative of a seahorse. Kind of like if you took a seahorse by the nose and tail and boink, straightened him out. Only you would never do that to a seahorse. That would be rude. Put that out. <laughs> uh, the cool thing about those pipefish is the males, like a seahorse, carry the eggs. Staghorn. Mackenzie's 
Oh, early some fish. Coon striped shrimp. There's two. <laughs> so we saw one of these slippery fish under the rock earlier. Okay, so one, another one of those unid. This is another one of those fish that can breathe through their skin. Uh, this one is not clear to me <laughs> right off the bat what it is. Kind of yeah. got the orange. Is it? It's yeah, like I think a, it's a saddleback, saddleback it's a pale. Pale one. Here, Kenzie's gonna hold this and we'll, we'll look at it while we find the other fish. Um, another pale one, but looks a little bit more. A little like more saddly. Yeah, so you can see fine. those kind of the pattern on its back. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kenzie loves gunnels, so, you know, spread the love. They're so cute. You can see they're very eel like, but if you notice on the front of their face, they have the two little pectoral fins. This is, a lot. This is getting a lot. <laughs> this is like a den of snakes. Okay, you can release release those if you'd like. <laughs> a party, a gunnel party. Two more and another coon stripe. Be free. Awesome. That was a fluffy. Oh, there's a there's a couple really really small ones. What do you all think the coolest thing you've seen on the beach today has been? The worms. Ooh, tell us about the worms. The ship worm. Oh yeah. So we started this video, which will be posted at the end of this live feed. Uh, the shipworms and their pink poop. That was pretty cool. The jangles, the rock jingles, the jingle jangles. Common names are fun. We like to play with those. Um, all right. Well, we're going to keep walking along just for a little bit longer. Uh, maybe we'll end by flipping more of these rocks that are unfortunately... Okay, I can't, can't do that. Uh, yeah, if you will... Perfect. Okay, we'll get a midshipman party, uh, and then we'll end on that, because they are such a cool fish. Um, but, okay. Cool. Alright, so this is a fish. Oh, and there's its bright yellow eggs. Here's the fish that lays them. <laughs> Again, we're being careful not to hold it too tightly so we don't get those spines poked into our hands. Um, very kind of frog-like, metallic. Um, very cool looking. And then if Mike can bravely flip it over so we can see those photophores on the bottom. Right. There's a big crab that just came out of there. A glimpse of that. Cool. And Mike, can you remind us how these work? <laughs> so there are bioluminescent bacteria that actually live in those little things. And they are what helps the organism bioluminesce. Cool. Gorgeous fish. Uh, and for our kiddos wondering if it hurts to have the fish thrown back in the water, we're guessing it does not. It's probably like jumping off the dock. <laughs> but I guess we haven't asked, so. We're, we're doing a gentle toss. <laughs> good, good wonder, friends. Um, and yeah, there's another big red rock crab. We can identify these guys by their black pincher tips. Yeah. And then, yeah, a cool thing about crabs is they can regrow lost limbs. So for whatever reason, this uh, individual has lost its right claw. And its first and its walking leg. And its first walking leg. Uh, and can regrow those as long as it has a couple more molts left in it. So uh, cool to see. And we can tell that that one's a male by the skinny pointy belly flap. Females have big wide belly flaps that can carry all their eggs. And we've definitely seen some egg carrying ladies today. So that's been fun. Uh, some other things we notice on the bottom of this rock. Okay, here's some sponge. This is not from the rock. There's an anemone. 
Notice when I touch it, it kind of reacts. Uh, there's a chitin, so an eight-plated snail. Another chitin, get a good look at that. And with that, uh, life abounds in the sound. So we will put this rock back how we found it. So those eggs do not get eaten. And uh, cheers to all these community scientists. Thanks friends for your work today. Uh, and thank all of you for tuning in. Thanks for your questions and your wonders and for sharing and commenting on these videos. That's an easy free way to help support Harbor Wild Watch um, in this digital time. We're super excited to bring you digital content. Uh, <laughs> and we'll, you know, keep, keep posting and sharing as we explore these incredible low tides this week um, and throughout the summer. So with that, thank you all again so much for tuning in and learn, have fun.